Hi, I'm Austin, a technical solutions engineer at Google. We're very excited about the possibilities that the Matter protocol brings to smart home devices. Together with my colleague Vinit, we're going to explore the key tools and processes of the development experience of Matter devices for Google Home. The tools demonstrated in this video will be available at our developer preview in late June. Throughout this video code lab, we'll cover environment setup and building a virtual device, creating a Matter integration for Google Home, the virtual device controller, a graphical user interface for controlling our virtual device, commissioning our virtual device, testing with the Google Home extension for Visual Studio Code and the test suite, and finally, we will cover the creation of new device types, thus allowing you to begin development of your own devices. More information about Matter can be found on the Google Home Developer Center or Connected Standards Alliance website. Our first step will be to set up our virtual device. The virtual device is simply a program running on a Linux host which emulates the networking functionality of a physical Matter device. During the early stages of development, using the virtual device offers a few advantages over using a physical device. Notably, through use of the virtual device, a physical device is not necessary to begin developing Matter devices. When making changes to the device's characteristics or features, it is only necessary to rebuild and rerun the virtual device. In the case of a physical device, we must first produce a build for the device and reflash it. Additionally, the virtual device also offers convenient observability via terminal output. There is no need to connect to and monitor a device over serial ports. Before we begin, we will need to install Docker on a Linux host machine. Once Docker is installed, we will pull a container image which includes all dependencies necessary for building and running a Matter virtual device. Windows and macOS computers are currently not supported by this Docker installation. Instructions for manually installing and building Matter without the container image can be found in the Matter documentation. Installing Docker is not covered by this video. Please refer to the Docker documentation to install Docker on your Linux system. Now that Docker is installed, we may pull the virtual device image. In this case, we are pulling the image from Google Cloud Container Registry. Please refer to the published code lab for the latest URL of the image. In our video, the Docker image already exists in the local cache and the pull operation completes quickly. However, expect that this step may take a few minutes to complete when run for the first time. Before starting a container, we run the xhost command. This allows the X window system to receive connections from localhost on port 1000. Our container will use this address to provide graphical user interfaces. Now, we will run a container using the pulled image by providing three arguments to the docker run command. Dash dash IPC equals host allows Docker to share the inter-process communication namespace with your host machine. Dash dash net equal host allows Docker to use the host's network stack inside the container. This is necessary to export display. Finally, dash E exports your host's display environment variable to the container. X client programs running in the container will then connect to your host's X server, thus providing graphical user interfaces. This is important to run the Zap tool for editing Matter clusters. We will need to execute commands from within the container to build and run our virtual device. In a second terminal window, open another interactive terminal session in the container by executing bash in the docker exec command. Note that the dash it option runs docker with an interactive terminal instead of in a background process. Now that we have completed the setup of our virtual device container, we may begin building our Matter device. All Matter examples are placed in the examples directory located within the root of the GitHub repository. There are several samples available, but our focus in this video will be on Chef. Chef is a sample app that provides a terminal interface and wrapping features similar to those found in the app located at examples shell. It is also a script that conveniently encapsulates several of the common tasks necessary for development into a single command. We will now execute Chef to create our example device. Chef has several options that can be viewed by running the script with the dash H option. Taking a closer look at the options we are using in this example, we find dash D, which defines the input device type. We have chosen lighting, which is a single color light bulb. Dash Z invokes the zap tool. This generates source files that implement the specified device type. Zap automatically creates code for our build. This code defines the light, being the data model, 
and its interaction with other devices, the interaction model. Dash B builds our device. Dash R is optional. This option enables RPCs on the virtual device so that other components, such as a graphical user interface, can communicate with it. Finally, Dash T is the target platform. Chef supports builds targeting Linux and some physical chipsets. Device builds targeting Linux may be run by executing the application located in the Linux build output directory. We will now execute the application. Upon execution, we are prompted to enter a matter shell. Once in the matter shell, we run the command onboarding codes on network to retrieve setup information necessary for commissioning our device over IP. This is one of several commands available in matter shell which allow us to analyze the state of our device. We will leave our device running. To ensure our device is accessible, we will disable our firewall. If you wish to leave your firewall running, allow this TCP and UDP connections to port 5540. The Google Home Developer Center console is a web application which centralizes integrations with Google Home on Matter as well as Smart Home and Local Home. Any Matter device that has gone through Matter certification works with Google Home. During development, we will create a project which provides additional context for the device we are developing. After our device is certified and we launch our project, the Google Home console will remain our hub for all of the additional features Google Home offers to Matter devices. On the Manage Projects page of the Google Home Developer Center console, we select Create a Project. We choose the option New Project and name our project Matter-Test. We open our new project and select Add Matter Integration. The virtual device we built previously was a lighting example. Respectively, we will name our new device integration Matter Light and select the device type Light. Finally, we must now enter the vendor ID and product ID. We populate vendor ID with 0xFFF1 and product ID with 0x8000. Note that the vendor IDs from 0xFFF1 through 0xFFF4 are reserved for testing. Before launching a product, you'll need to apply for a vendor ID from the Connected Standards Alliance. Off screen, we will reboot our hub to ensure that it receives the most recent Actions Project configuration. If you need to change the vendor ID or product ID later, please reboot your hub again after saving the project. The Virtual Device Controller is a standalone application that provides a graphical user interface to control and display the states of Matter virtual devices. The Device Controller issues remote procedure calls to Matter devices in our development environment. For the purpose of example, we will demonstrate installation in our environment. We begin by cloning the Git repository of the device controller. Please refer to the published code lab for the latest URL of the virtual device controller. Once our clone operation is complete, we install dependencies and build the application. We will launch the newly built device controller by running electron main.js. The virtual device controller has two options at startup, dash dash s followed by host colon port tells the controller to connect to a virtual device's network socket at the specified host and port. Dash dash D, followed by a serial port file address, such as dev tty usb 0, tells the device controller to connect to a physical device over the specified serial port. It is also possible to launch the device controller with no option specified. Under these circumstances, the device controller will default to the network socket option using port 33000 and host localhost. Observing the virtual device controller's interface, we are treated to a complete representation of our virtual device's state along with facilities for updating that state. Each time we update the light switch, brightness, or color setting, the device controller will send a remote procedure call to our virtual device. Once every second, the device controller will pull the device state and refresh the interface accordingly. Let's observe the device controller's behavior when we control our device with the Google Home app. You'll notice that the switch on the device controller interface updates shortly after the light state is toggled in the Home app. Conveniently, we may also retrieve the QR code used in our virtual device's commissioning flow from the virtual device controller interface. We will open the QR code for our virtual device in this example and leave it available for our next step. 
We will now commission our virtual device. Before commissioning our device, we will need to verify that the following steps are complete. A Google Home Mini, Google Nest Mini, or Nest Hub second generation device, our hub, is in the home network. Our device is configured in the Google Home Developer Console, as we executed previously. Our hub is paired with the same Google account we used to sign in on the Google Home Developer Console. Our hub is on the same Wi-Fi network as the computer we are using to run our virtual matter device. And finally, our hub is in the same structure we are using on our Google Home app. Structure is the house on the Google Home graph. We will now turn our attention to the Google Home app. To begin commissioning our device, we tap the plus icon in the upper left corner. Next, we select Setup Device and New Device. We select the home to commission our new device into and tap Next. The app begins scanning. We now choose the option Chip Device. Depending on when you are viewing this video, look for an option that says Matter Device in the event that you do not see an option for Chip Device. We just scanned our virtual device's QR code. You can retrieve this QR code from the virtual device controller as seen previously. You can also retrieve the QR code from a web page at the link seen below in our virtual device's terminal output at startup. Let's observe from the virtual device side as the commissioning process completes. Our virtual device has been successfully commissioned into our home. We will name our new device Office Lite and test control. The Google Home extension for VS Code offers features and tools useful when developing Matter devices. Note that the installation of VS Code and the Google Home extension is not covered in this video. Let's take a moment to examine the Google Home extension for VS Code. We select the Google Home icon on VS Code's activity bar. We now select our project, Matter-Test. In the Quick Access menu, we select Resources. This displays links to resources helpful throughout our development within the Google Home ecosystem. We will turn our attention to the Google Assistant Simulator in the lower left of the screen. Issuing text commands in the Assistant Simulator performs the same operations as voice commands issued to the Google Home Assistant on our hub or phone. In our example, we will test the command, Turn on the light which updates the state of our virtual device. Returning to the Quick Access menu, we select the option Cloud Logging. This opens the Cloud Logging Logs Viewer, which contains a record of messages flowing between Assistant and our device. Expanding the different log entries to view their full content, we can quickly locate the success log for our previous intent whilst turning on the light. We now return to the Resources tab and select the Home Graph Viewer. The Home Graph Viewer allows us to view all of the devices in the Home Graph within the extension. Test Suite is a public tool that allows us to self-test and validate our Smart Home implementation. The Test Suite automatically generates and runs test cases based on the devices and traits associated with our project. Let's utilize the Test Suite on our virtual device. In the Developer Center console, we navigate to the Test tab on the left menu. In the Device Settings to the right, we click on the Test button to launch Test Suite. The devices associated with our project are listed in the resulting screen. We select our light bulb. We confirm the test cases will run and start the process. Test Suite then generates test cases for the selected devices and executes the test. Failing tests will be marked in red. In our final exploration of the matter development process and tooling, we will create a new device type. We will do so by editing the zap file previously used to generate our virtual device and change the device from a light bulb to a matter sensor which measures temperature. A zap file is a JSON file that contains the data model configuration of clusters, attributes, and commands that are enabled for an application. A zap file can be created using the ZCL Advanced Platform or Zap Tool. 
The Zap tool is a third-party tool offering a generic templating engine for applications and libraries based on the Zigbee cluster library. This tool is included in the Matter repository as a submodule. We begin by launching the Zap tool from the command line and providing the lightbulb zap file as an argument. The Zap tool may be launched directly or from Chef with the appropriate flags. The Zap tool's Zigbee cluster configurator window appears. We don't need to make changes to endpoint 0 as it contains the root node. The temperature sensor will also contain the root node with the same information. We select the edit button of endpoint 1. In the dialog that appears, we select Matter Temperature Sensor 0x302 and click on Save. The required clusters for the temperature sensor device will be selected on endpoint 1, but confirm in the specification the right configuration for your device type. Some clusters, attributes, and commands are optional, and there are changes in the specification that might not be reflected in the tool. Moreover, feature flags should reflect the capabilities of your device. We set the filter to show enabled clusters. Now, the list only contains the selected clusters. We click the blue gear icon to edit the cluster's attributes and commands. You may edit whether a cluster server or client is individually enabled by selecting the Enable column. You may also set Show back to all clusters and individually add or remove clusters to or from this endpoint. In the upper left-hand menu, we select File, Save As. We save the configuration file in examples chef as temperature-sensor.zap and exit the tool. We have now created a new Matter device type. Now that we have completed the creation of a new device type, we can step back through the previous sections of the code lab and iterate on our design. We may start by asking the Assistant emulator for the reading of the sensor in the Google Home extension for VS Code, or by executing the array of tests already available to us in the test suite. To iterate on our design further, we may relaunch the Zap tool, update our device, and rebuild it. This concludes our exploration of the tools and processes fundamental to the development experience of Matter devices for Google Home. We hope that you enjoyed watching this video and are excited by the Matter Protocol's integration into Google Home. As a reminder, the tools on display throughout this video will be available in late June. Please continue referring to the Google Home Developer Center for more information on availability, timelines, and documentation.